Welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast, where science and spirit are the focus of creating your most fertile life. You'll find a beautiful balance of grounded science-based topics as well as spiritual talk and how they are both important for moving toward optimal fertility. Empower yourself along with me. I'm your host, Dr. Maria Rothenberger, a fellow fertility friend, therapist, coach, best-selling author, and spirit baby intuitive. Let's get started. Hi again. Welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast. This is episode 154, Trust Yourself. This is all about intuition, which I've talked about at length on this podcast. But today I am actually pulling from my book, Transcending Infertility, because something happened just today that reminded me, basically, that I needed to use my own skill that I talk about pretty frequently, and that is tapping into intuition. Now, at first I thought about this from a psychotherapeutic point of view, which is this skill called wise mind. And that wise mind is from dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT. And it basically means that you take both your emotion mind and your logical reason, reasonable mind, and you marry the two and live from there, make decisions from there. But Today, I'm talking about something a little bit different because intuition is neither of those. It's, and it's not wise mind either. Intuition is an inner knowing that really has no emotional um, charge. And it's also not from logic or from the brain or, you know, like, you know, inductive reasoning or deductive reasoning or anything like that. It's just an instant knowing that something is either true or not true, or you just have a knowing. Um, in the Spirit Baby Foundations training, this we I talk about this in terms of clear cognizance. That's what it's called. It's just a clear knowing, a clear instant knowing that something is true or false or whatever, or that it exists, whatever. It's just a knowing. <laughs> and so I think that I wanted to address wise mind too today, which is important, um, but I really want to highlight this intuitive knowing that we have, this claircognizance, just an instant knowing. And I will talk about what specifically happened today because it's not fertility related, but then I want to talk about or read from my book, Transcending Infertility, because it is fertility related so that you can see both how this skill is useful for your everyday life, but then also useful for your fertility life, which Uh, we all know is pretty big, really big when you're struggling to build your family. Okay, so what happened today was that I got an email from somebody that um, it was totally fine and, and reasonable for her to ask of me this, whatever she was asking. I don't want to get into too many details, but she was asking me to do something. And it was reasonable from my left brain my logical brain was like, that feel, you know, that's reasonable for her to ask that. But my, I was having emotions about it. And I'm like, what is this emotion? Then I tapped into my intuition and my intuition was like, no, don't do that. Don't, just don't do it. And so I actually drew from wise mind first. So I had this emotion about it and I had this logic about it and I was able to live from both. Like I need to make a decision about what to do next with this information, with what she is asking of me. But my intuition was like instant knowing. So there was no processing. There was no like, uh, okay, here are the reasonable, here's the pros and cons, you know, here are the reasonable things and here are the emotions I'm having about it, which don't feel great. But my intuition was like, boom, don't do it. Just don't do it. And so it's much more efficient. <laughs> it's like, you don't have to process things and go over and look at spreadsheets and numbers and statistics and feel your feelings and all that. It's just, which is useful too, but I just had an intuitive knowing that I needed to not do what they were asking. So I really wanted to highlight that today, just an instant knowing. And I'll, t- I'll break it down a little bit too when I read from my chapter, because I'll, I'll talk about the, um, you know, the reasonable stuff, the emotional stuff, but then the intuition piece, which is quite separate. It's, it's just an automatic knowing that 
I needed to not do what my doc was asking me to do. All right, so I'm going to read from my chapter, but first a quick word from today's podcast sponsor. This is the From Scratch Body. I'm Liv Austin and I believe that anyone can cook. Since being diagnosed with endometriosis, I have been on a journey to find out what food makes me feel great. By cooking my meals from scratch, not only have I started feeling much better, I've also fallen in love with cooking completely. So every week we explore a new topic that can help us feel better and become better cooks. And then I share a recipe with you so you can cook along with me if you want. You can always find the recipes and the transcripts from the podcast on my website, thefromscratchbody.com. Listen to The From Scratch Body wherever you get your podcasts. So I'm going to be reading now from chapter seven of Transcending Infertility. The chapter is called Trust Yourself. And the quote at the top is, no problem can be solved from the same level of consciousness that created it. And that was said by Albert Einstein. You can pick up this book, by the way, on Amazon or my website, drmariarothenberger.com. It is an Amazon number one bestseller. Yay. And I've gotten beautiful feedback from folks who have read it. So I just want to set up the background. This chapter, or in this chapter, I talk about our final treatment cycle. It was a frozen embryo transfer, and um, (laughs) there's a lot of laughter and shit in there in the beginning, but I'm going to get to the very end where I find out that uh, we had a chemical pregnancy from that transfer. And um, a lot of shit had gone down before that. We obviously, we had Um, two other fresh cycles and um, marriage issues and our beautiful yellow lab passed away unexpectedly. And oh my God, there's just so much stuff in there. Um, But in this chapter, we're coming around to where things are really great again. And I, I was putting some skills into place, particularly meditation that was really helping me feel good about life. And um, we come to this the end of this cycle, and here's what happened. I wept. I'd had a ton of hope for that cycle, even though I had no expectation. This grief was different, though. Historically, I would rage for a few hours before the grief set in, and then I'd become a shadow of myself for weeks. This time, however, after 24 hours of sadness, I walked down the narrow carpeted steps of our little Cape Cod starter home, turned the corner into the tiny kitchen, gathered all the needles and remaining drugs on the counter, and swept them right into the garbage. This isn't the safe way to dispose of those items. A quote-unquote good person would use a sharps container rather than a typical household waste bin. But I didn't give a fuck. Not one single fuck. You know why? I was free. It was like I was moving around in slow motion and gleefully getting rid of all the paraphernalia that had kept me trapped in infertility land for the last six and a half years. Every single reminder was tossed into the garbage along with the thousands of tears I'd shed in my prison, stagnant with the weight of my dreams not coming true. I no longer felt that my dreams weren't coming true. Instead, I was creating them in that moment. I was free. My doc practically begged me to go back to the clinic. He wanted to work on my egg quality. The old desperate me would have easily been moved back into the treatment world. Actually, I never would have left. But now, now I was an entirely new person. Now listen up, because this part is very important. In the words of Joseph Campbell, I was following my bliss. I knew following the doc's recommendations was not my bliss. It's not just that I knew it with my brain. I felt it in my soul. Treatments were not the way to parenthood. I didn't know what lay around the corner of our lives, but I did know that my dreams were going to come true and that I'd have to move away from the medical community. It's scary, don't you think? Here's this very 
powerful community telling you precisely what you need to do next. And you reply, no, thanks. My bliss is in this direction. Your bliss? Yeah, okay, crazy lady. Did you light a candle, sage your room, and read your tarot cards too? The point is, scary will always be there. Scary is all up in our business every single friggin' day. And when you choose to look scary in the face, give it a hug and do whatever it is you want to do anyway. You will have run straight into your courage. The more you tune into your intuition, trust what you have to say is your next move, acknowledge the fear, give it a hug, and make your next move anyway, the more content, powerful, and peaceful you'll be. I knew that my next move was to walk away from treatments. I felt it. And by this point, after all the years of suffering, I finally trusted myself. Fertility key. Trust yourself. Have you ever had that thing where you think of someone, then they send you a text message? Before caller ID, you would have been able to pick up the ringing phone and say, Hi, Bill. Yeah, for some reason I knew it was you. Perhaps someone has made that comment when you called or texted them. OMG, I was just thinking of you. What about that phrase, trust your gut? You've heard that before, right? It's that feeling that makes you think twice before walking down a dark alley at night. It's more than just thinking, hey, it's dark, I'm alone, and that's a possibly unsafe alley, don't walk there. It's a literal sensation in your body that tells you that walking down the alley is a bad idea. In both of these examples, you trust yourself, don't you? You know that what your body is telling you is true. But what happens when you have a gut feeling about something that is the complete opposite of what you think should happen? What happens when everyone around you is telling you something that your body tells you is not right for you? My doctor pressed me hard to continue treatments. He had many studies and reasoned very well that I could possibly conceive and carry to term under his care. Years prior, I would have been sucked right in despite the discomfort. I may have even shrugged off the sensations as nerves, jitters, or, quote, cold feet. But this time, I paid attention to my inner guide. As scary as that was, I knew I could trust it now. This fertility key is to help you begin to trust yourself again, too. Everyone is born with the ability to intuit. It's a way to keep us safe, to keep us on the right path for us. Sure, others may benefit from that new fad diet or amazing new exercise machine or that just new on the market fertility treatment that comes with a set of Jinsu knives. But will you? Nobody in the world can tell you what will work for you regardless of the research, what worked for others, or what statistics are in your favor. You know why? Because you are the boss of you. Only you get to guide yourself toward your ultimate goals. Knowing that you can trust your intuition, your instinct, is quite scary at first. After all, you've likely been used to reasoning, logic, statistics, professional opinions, and Dr. Google to make quote-unquote informed decisions. And yes, this type of, of reasoning is quite useful. There's nothing wrong with looking at data. The problem comes when we listen to all this reasoning, our bodies and intuition still emit something in isn't quite right signals, and we ignore said signals. In this fertility key, I'm asking you to get out of your head and into your intuition. What's the difference, you ask? Excellent question. If you're like me, you just want to know stuff, don't you? You want to know next steps, know whether to pursue a treatment, know whether to attend a party or not, or know what kind of exercise or food is right for you. When I talk about knowing in this chapter, I mean the idea of an immediate knowing. This is the kind of knowing that does not require the typical pros and cons lists, Excel spreadsheets, and hours of research. Reason and intellect are useful, of course, but when we balance them out with knowing from a higher space, we become even more productive and efficient. Here's a metaphor for you. Imagine you're standing in front of a giant wall. It's as tall as you can see up and as wide as you can see on either side of you. You have to get to the other side. Infertility feels just like this, doesn't it? 
Using your reason and logic, you may surmise many things. Perhaps you decide the wall is too large, so you simply give up and turn around. Maybe you decide you can scale it, so you go about the task of gathering the necessary tools and supplies. You could also decide to keep walking either left or right, hoping for an opening somewhere. Or perhaps there's a way to dig underneath. All of these are reasonable pursuits, but it's incredibly difficult to know which one to move toward. Now, imagine that you're able to float above the wall. From this vantage point, you're able to see where you are, where the wall is, and what's beyond the wall. This is like intuition, because you're now so high off the ground, you're also able to see an efficient way to get to the other side. Using all your resources, logic, reason, and intuition, you're able to devise a plan that's the best for you. What would your fertility journey be like if you were able to access your intuition? What would be different for you? How much stress relief would you have if you instantly knew what to do next? You have all the resources within you to access this knowing. We all do. And when you begin to become aware of, cultivate, and practice using your intuition, you'll begin to realize that you can trust yourself at all times. I go on here to talk about a couple of things that are really important for beginning to tap into your intuitive knowing. Everybody has this ability. It's not like a superpower. I mean, it can be considered a superpower, but everybody has it. Um, I talk about activating the pineal gland. I talk about the HeartMath Institute and using the heart coherence technique. A lot of things in here, but I also uh, give you my own personal exercises, getting familiar with your intuition, um, using a skill that I call trying on the genes technique. Um, I'll actually talk about that in a second. Uh, And there's also a meditation for accessing intuition and a mantra. Every chapter, by the way, in this book has a mantra and and a fertility meditation that actually when you purchase the book comes with it. I recorded, I pre-recorded all of the meditations for you. You can download them for free when you um, purchase the book. But let me just talk about the trying on the genes technique. Okay. So I write about it in this book, in the book. So you'll, you'll get the whole like gist, but the basic idea is, okay, so I, I am short and curvy. Okay. So going into a Uh, trying on or changing room to try on some jeans is challenging for me, right? So it's jeans are either too long, or there's a gap at the waist, it's just like they don't fit right. So tapping in your into your intuition is kind of like this, you go in and you grab a bunch of jeans to try on. And this one's too long, this one's too tight, this one's too loose at the waist. But then there's a pair that comes. And you put them on. And it's like, Angel singing. Ah, these are the ones, Maria. <laughs> Keep these jeans and get them in every color. Um, it, the intuition is like that. It just feels exactly right. Sometimes our thoughts and our feelings get in the way, so they don't feel exactly right. Like there's a pair of jeans that fit right everywhere, except they're a little too long. So that's still something to pay attention to. So sometimes when you are try- doing this technique where you're trying things on for size, you will feel something that doesn't, it's not perfect, but it feels more right than another thing. So like, let's say that you have, let's do something not fertility related. Let's say you're trying to choose whether to have um, a cookie or a piece of pie. Okay, so you're sitting with the cookie and the piece of the p- and piece of pie. And you're feeling into, huh, which one does my body want right now? The first thing to do is to sense what it would be like to eat the cookie. Sense what that feels like. Then you tap into what would, what would it be like to eat the piece of pie? And then you feel into which one feels a little bit better. Now, again, it can be that neither is perfect. Maybe you actually want, like me, a plate of French fries instead. (laughs) And with our new air fryer, that's even more healthy. Um, maybe you don't want either of those, but practice tuning in anyway to see which one feels a little bit better than the other. And, and when I say feeling, it's not emotion. It is like a physical sensation in the body. That's hard to describe. It's a, it's an, it's an ease of sorts. It's like, ah, that feels 
a little bit lighter, a little bit better, a little bit more like two puzzle pieces that fit together. It feels a little bit more like that. You know that satisfaction that you have when you're putting a puzzle together and like you you put a piece in that looks like it'll fit, but it doesn't, ugh, it just doesn't fit quite right. But then you find the one that does and you're like, ooh, snap. It's just, it just lays right in there, snaps right in there. That's the sensation or the intuitive knowing or that fit that you're looking for. It's just a, a it's like a satisfaction or a satisfying feeling in your body. Um, so that's what I call the trying on the jeans technique because that's how you you make decisions well. You try them on for size and see what would it feel like if I took this path? What would it feel like if I took this path or path C or path Q? It doesn't matter. Just feel into it and see what feels lighter. And there are other exercises in here, as I said, to begin tapping into your intuition, including that meditation. But here's the thing. When you begin really practicing this and like com- compiling evidence that it's working for you, you will instantly tap into it. Like I did today. I was just like, I know that I need to not do that. I need to not do what she's asking. And, you know, politely sent an email back and explained or whatever. But ultimately, I trusted myself. I trusted that I needed to not do what she was asking. And I don't totally know all the reasons behind that. That's one thing too. The scary part that I was talking about in the book, you know, when you look at scary in the face and you give it a hug and you move forward in in like any way where your intuition is guiding you, that's when you run straight into courage. I felt courageous, you know, like I'm doing this scary thing. I'm saying no, I'm setting a boundary. And I feel courageous now. I feel good. It feels right. It feels lighter than had I taken the other path. And so I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. This skill is so useful. Tapping into your intuition is so useful on so many levels in and outside of the fertility world. If you are in a relationship that you know, mm, you just have an intuitive knowing it's not quite right. Yeah, but everything that they're saying you know, the words that they're using is what I want in my life, but their behaviors don't quite match that. I'm not sure. What do I do? But you are sure. And you know, so you're looking at some evidence, you're feeling your feelings, but you're also, you're tapping into that intuition that knows "Mm, that's not the right path for you. You need to move over here, even though you don't know what's on the other path. That's the scary part. All of this is scary. You know, all the not knowing, all the not being sure it's all scary But when you find the evidence that your intuition is guiding you correctly because you tap into your courage and follow it despite not knowing where it's going to go, you will begin to feel more and more mm, like you can trust yourself. And I did talk about this path of intuition sometimes does come with challenges, like especially when you're just plugging along like, oh yeah, I can trust my intuition, trust my intuition. There are going to be moments that as you grow into this, that you're like, oh shit, I didn't see that one coming, but my intuition told me to go that direction. Why? Um, If you go back to my podcast episode about the stages of accessing your intuition, oh gosh, I can't remember the exact title of that. Um, I will link it in the show notes. Um, You'll have more information about why that happens, but it's all, in in summary, it's all part of your spiritual growth, your um, growth into accessing, accessing your intuition. It's all part of it. But in the beginning, it really does guide you well. It does, it does wonders for guiding you through difficult decision-making things and easy decision-making things. Like today on a scale of one to 10, 10 being like the hardest decision ever today was like a four for me. I mean, it was like hard, but not devastating. Um, Fertility stuff, whether or not to move forward with another treatment cycle. Whoa, that's way up there. Eight, maybe eight, nine, maybe. I don't know. (laughs) Really intense. Um, So this was much lower on that scale, but intuition, no matter where you are on that scale, is incredibly helpful. So today, I just want to encourage you to begin accessing your intuition so that you can start building trust in yourself more than Dr. Google or your providers. Um, 
it's really important to do the things that resonate with you. Okay, with that, may you have beautiful access to your intuition. May you begin to grow and learn and build gorgeous evidence that your intuition knows what's right for you. And until next time, be well. Thank you.